When the hour had come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said to them, With fervent desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. There was a great king who was old. And after a very bloody war with the neighboring country, he decided to have supper with the top seven nobles of his kingdom. The top six nobles he had known since he was a very young man. They had all achieved their nobility through inheritance from their ancestors. But the lowest, the seventh highest noble, had only recently achieved his nobility, being given the title of duke by the king himself. This individual, this duke, had been a knight before he had been given this title of duke. Before he was a knight, he was the king's enemy. This king, whenever he defeated a foreign army, would offer the best warriors of the other army to come and fight for him. And in doing so, he would knight them, which means they would not only be given a nobility, but they would also be given lands for themselves to own in the king's kingdom. This king had conquered a very, very difficult enemy, and he approached perhaps the most fierce warrior he had ever fought against. And he said to him, If you come and fight for me, I will make you a knight, and you will be a noble in my kingdom. This knight agreed, and he went and fought for his new king. He had been given lands, and on those lands had lived servants who worked the land as farmers. The king found out that this, this knight had went and met with those who he had been given as property, the servants. And he told them that he, this knight, would give the family of servants a bigger share of the crops. This impressed the king. Indeed, this was a good man. So when the most recent war came, and it was time to fight, he called for all his nobles to send men to fight this new enemy. He noticed that this knight had brought with him a young boy. He asked this knight, who is the lad that you have brought with you? And he said, it is the son, the eldest son, of the people who are working my land. I told them that I would take their boy and he would be my squire. And I would teach him in the ways of being a good warrior and being a noble man. This king really liked this knight. He really hit the nail on the head when he chose this foreign, foreign individual to be a nobleman in his service. The king sat apart during the battle and sat up to watch the battle. As the first fly of arrows was loosed, he saw the knight get off his horse and hold his big shield over the servant so that the servant wouldn't be hit. But then the call came to charge, and as this knight got back up on his horse and ready to charge, he was unaware that the enemy had loosed another sling of arrows. One of the arrows caught the squire in the neck. As quick as he could, he got down off of his horse and picked the lad up and held him in his arms as he died. With tears streaming down his face, the knight, ignoring everything else around him, the battle, the next flight of arrows, he walked up to the king and placed the lad just a few yards away from the king. And he said, Please, my lord, watch over him as I go fight for you. The king then watched as this knight by himself slew 150 men. They didn't realize who they had upset. After the battle... The knight walked back up to where he had laid this little boy and found that the king had taken a linen cloth and wrapped up his body and put it on a cart. The knight looked up and he said, My lord, is that my squire? And he said, Yes. And he says, Good knight, I will carry him on my cart back to our home. The knight shook his head. He said, No, he is my responsibility. I will bear him on my horse and I will walk. The king shook his head and he said, Sir, I will take him. He said, No, this is my loss. I must take him myself. The king decided, Well, okay. So the knight took the boy's body off and he laid it on his horse and he walked the several hundred miles back home. 
So when the king got back home and he decided to have each of his nobles over for supper, just the king and the noble himself, on seven consecutive days, he sent out invitations to all the seven nobles, including this duke. He had been so impressed with how noble this individual was that he said, you know what, I'm going to make him a duke. Knight isn't even good enough. So not long after they got back, the invitations went out. Four of the first six responded and said, yes, I will sup with you in your palace, king. Two of them said, no, Lord, this war has taken so much, I have to be with my people. He didn't hear back from this duke. Wow. He was kind of taken aback, man. I really thought this guy had it figured out. This guy seemed like a real good person of character. So the following week, after he hadn't heard anything back from this one, he sent the invitation again. And a few days pass, and still no reply. Now he's not so much disappointed, he's almost angry. What's the deal? I mean, I even took his servant and wrapped him up and was going to take him back on my own cart, and he's not even answering my, my call. So the week starts when he's going to have supper with his first nobleman. And on the first day of that week, he sends a servant, and he says, go get his answer. You take him the invitation, the third invitation, and you get his answer. Don't come back until you have his answer. So that day he waits and he has supper with his first noble that night. After he's fixing to go to bed, he has the servant come in, the messenger, the page. And the page comes in and he said, My Lord, I do not have his answer. The king said, I told you not to. He said, My Lord, he was not there. I waited all day at his manor house, and he did not return. Well, where was he? Lord, he was with the family of his servant, his squire, and he was burying the boy himself. So the king is kind of a little bit upset at himself now. Maybe, maybe I had him wrong. Maybe he is a good man. But why wouldn't he answer me? I'm the king. So the next three days pass, and he has supper with the other individuals that had agreed. On the seventh day, which is the first day of the new week, the king wakes up and still no response from the nobleman, the guy he had made duke and given even more lands and more wealth to. So he's disappointed. He spends his day in his library reading. And when the call for supper comes, he heads down the big stairway that is in the front of his palace. As he reaches the bottom step, the door opens in front of him, and being backlit by the sun outside, he sees three figures enter. As the door shuts, he realizes it's the duke flanked by two guards. The king stops and he waits, and he sees that this duke is wearing some of the finest clothes he's ever seen a human being wear. He is clean, he walks up, and he is just as happy as he can be. Now the king's even more confused. I don't know what this guy's doing. I, I, he seems like a noble guy with good character. Now he doesn't respond. Now he shows up at my door. So the king is waiting as the nobleman and the guards walk up. And the nobleman kind of, the duke, he, the king doesn't seem happy. So he kneels before the king and he says, My lord, I have come to sup with you at your command. The king nods to the guards and they leave. And the duke is still kneeling with his head bowed. And he says, uh, I had invited you and I sent three invitations and I never heard back from you and I began to worry that I made a poor choice in naming my duke. What the duke said next confirmed to the king that indeed not only had he made a wise choice, but he, he might have even found a successor to his throne. The king looked down at the knight as he looked up with just an absolute look of bewilderment on his face, as though the, the duke couldn't believe what he was hearing. He said, my lord, you invited me to sup at your table. Who would dare refuse such an honor of the king? Our king has invited us to sup at his table this morning. This duke had no illusions in his mind. The king said, go, I'm going. I don't even need to reply. You said it. That's enough for me. This duke was sent an invitation, and there was no need to reply. What is there to reply? You've asked, I'm coming. Our king has invited us to come and sup with him this morning. In the first century, that was why the disciples came together on the first day of the week, was so that they could share in the communion with our Lord. He has invited each and every one of us to come and sup at his table. As we eat and as we drink, let's remember who it is that is eating and drinking with us.